Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. This is the five minute chart of the Bitcoin from ClarkMoody.com. You can see that we got through that very important old high at about 137.5. Uh, you can see that the chart has that typical pattern uh, test and then breakout. We're now testing about that 144 level. Looks like we're getting a little bit of a sell off, but we have that same sort of pattern. If we back out just a little bit here, you can see that the the major move here was on this big volume coming in at about 10,000 bitcoins. So it, it appears there's more buying coming on. Now if we go further out, we're going to see that uh, the major uh, big and important resistance is going to be this one over here. And that's going to be a high of about 147 or so. Uh, so that's very important because, as I pointed out before, on the way down, uh, we've pretty much gone through all of this resistance here. Almost all these red candles are now behind us. And uh, the last one is this big red candle. But you can see it wasn't on a lot of volume for that big red candle. It was about 60,000 or so. So the market's looking very strong. I'm very curious to see when we get through this. Uh, if we run the same way we ran before and how much selling we get when we get into these uh, prices here uh, if we go out to the daily you can see that there weren't there were not very many days spent at those prices you've got one two three up days your huge down day and then another down day and that's about it so really only a total of about five days that we spent above these prices so it's going to be very interesting. Of course, uh, the Bitcoin's epitaph was obviously played way too early. So let's show the controls and check out some market depth here. We'll go ahead and go to five dollar increments on there just to get a look at the market depth. So we have about all the way down. We've got about 116,000 bitcoins or so that are offered on uh, Mt. Gox and you can see here the one I've been watching real close has been that $70 price and the $300 price. Under the $300 price we only have 96,000. A few days ago we were at 100,000 so that number is dropping. At the $70 price we now have 128,000 bid, uh, 100,000 at 75. So that 100,000 figure is moving up on the buy side and it's moving down on the sell side that is indicating market strength to me and uh, everything I'm seeing is indicating strength now anecdotally if we go over to the uh, blog we posted an interview today was uh, with Mark the famous uh, uh, Mark of Goxed fame I, I think that's on the other page and uh, he's the uh, main guy at Mt. Gox and uh, they got an interview with him uh, about uh, what's going on on the exchange and uh, well I don't have it here but anyway uh, the main point is this that uh, what he said was that they're seeing anywhere from I believe the figure he gave was uh, two to 10 million dollars a day of inflows onto Mt. Gox and uh, they're seeing anywhere from a hundred thousand to two million or so uh, outflow at Mt. Gox so we're talking about roughly a 10 to 1 uh, difference on those and uh, that's that's gonna be big that actually supports the idea. Here he is. This is Mark here. And uh, I'm not going to play it because uh, I don't want to get a copyright strike. But uh, you can go ahead and click on that. So everything I'm seeing in that interview and in the market confirms that uh, this is actually what is happening. And uh, Mark said in that interview that uh, they had a very, very thin market and uh, a lot of people didn't get uh, filled 
and uh, now they're they're coming back in so very very bullish information uh, has some questions I want to go to but before I do that I want to jump over to the the alt cryptocurrencies now if you remember uh, the last time I was covering these uh, we had uh, I don't know if there was a DDoS attack against Vercurex but uh, Vercurex went down for a period of time I thought they were going to come up with a new software platform but they came up with the old one it, it, it's definitely inferior to the uh, one over at BTC-E and uh, at that time when Vercurex was down BTC-E managed to add t the TRC coin was not uh, traded on that exchange and also the PP coin was not traded on that exchange so now they still haven't added this dev coin and this is very interesting this is still only traded over at uh, Vercurex and you can see an astounding volume of uh, 74 million traded today and uh, I'm probably gonna pick let's go to the all-time chart I'm probably gonna pick this dev coin actually as uh, possibly the next one to blow uh, but uh, the chart to me that chart is very very bullish unfortunately it's not traded over at BTC-E so um, that's uh, that's a downside on that but I suggest that if you're into this you probably want to have a Vercurex account you probably want to have I have a Vercurex account I have a BTCE account I have a Coinbase account I have a Mt. Gox account and uh, I have a uh, blockchain wallet as well online and uh, so but back to the charts let's get back to uh, the Litecoin now the Litecoin has been in the doldrums uh, a lot of speculation has come off about the uh, new ASIC miners and uh, I posted a video on the blog about the uh, uh, unboxing there's a video you can see where uh, uh, one of those is demonstrated plugged into a laptop I think he got 5.5 giga hashes so Litecoin is kind of in the doldrums but at the same time it corrected back to the old high and now it's just kind of backing and filling uh, the the Terra coin or the TRC coin there's been quite a lot of action in this coin lately I've uh, traded in and out of it uh, now the the history remember as I pointed out uh, there's not going to be a lot of history here. This is a 10-day history because it's new to uh, the BTCE exchange. So I've been trading in and out of this one for the last couple of days. I, I got in here and uh, sold out, and I, I'm scaling back in here, uh, back in around 4. And so if you want to piggyback me on that one, go ahead. The big action today, though, and I definitely uh, played in that, was the name coin. Uh, we had a big, big move still going on in the name coin. Uh, I managed to get in and actually was uh, participating in uh, getting the breakout going here and uh, sold out quite a few on that rally. But uh, if we go out to the all time, there's definitely action in the name coin. You can see that's very, very bullish formation that we have there. And uh, this is very startling because you have to remember with all of these coins, these are rallying against the Bitcoin as the Bitcoin's rallying against the dollar. So this is kind of like a double rally. Uh, some of these people who got in here, you can see there are people who got in here all the way down at 0 0.0008 and you can see it traded as high as 0 0.003. So uh, I don't know, you do the math. Uh, some big big moves in these altcoins. The last one I wanted to look at though and uh, I think that you'll see what I'm talking about as soon as I bring up this chart this is and it's traded at Verwox whatever that is this is the SLL slash BTC. Now I'm not really familiar with this but my understanding is that this is the Second Life coin so I know you've heard a lot about Ripple lately and I've yet to cover that but my understanding is I have very limited knowledge of both of these but my understanding is that neither one and that includes uh, what we're seeing with Amazon and Starbucks and 
they're all talking about getting into the game, but uh, there's a big, big difference between decentralized peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrencies and centralized cryptocurrencies. Now, I think it's pretty clear just by looking at the chart that you're looking at a centralized uh, cryptocurrency here because you can see that the price pattern is just straight down and uh, this has taken a tremendous fall you can see it's run from a third of a Bitcoin more than a third of a Bitcoin all the way down to at the bottom here uh, we're talking about uh, more than a 90 percent drop so for me that's a demonstration in and of itself you can see the volume uh, the big difference between a uh, cryptocurrency where they can print up as much as they want and a cryptocurrency uh, where it's decentralized and they can't do that. So let's get over to the questions here. This is uh, from the Chevalier and uh, a question about ASIC miners. Now that the ASICs seem to be shipping in force, how do you see them affecting the Bitcoin market? What about altcoins like Litecoin? It seems obvious that the people who have large investments in GPU mining rigs will look to continue mining by switching to Litecoins, for instance. But are there other ways things could shake out or any non-obvious outcomes of the new ASIC hashing power that you've been considering? Well, as I pointed out, uh, there's a video I have unboxing of the, the Jalapeno from Butterfly Labs guy that did that he plugged it into his laptop he put it on his BTC guild and he got about 5.5 giga hashes I think when he did his power check he was looking at about 30 watts now my mining rig that I bought a couple of years ago has a 700 watt power supply and two I think they're 79 70s uh, I think when they're both running together they mine at about 1.6 giga hashes so uh, we're talking about uh, probably a tenfold hashing power increase and maybe a tenfold decrease in uh, power consumption. So if you're talking about on the ratio, I don't know, maybe a hundredfold difference. Uh, that's my guess. I don't know. We'll see as these ship out. Now, what difference is it going to make? Well, it's obviously going to make a real big difference in the hashing power on the Bitcoin network. My guess is that uh, a lot of people, 99% are going to deploy these on Bitcoins. I think when I, I did a calculation of his 5.5 giga hashes at current difficulty, it came to about 38 bucks a day. So uh, I think that unit could pay. I don't remember what that unit was, but it wasn't very expensive. And uh, so I'm thinking about possibly buying five or so of those uh, of those jalapenos and testing them with some of the alt cryptocurrencies but that brings us to this issue of litecoin now i don't know enough about it i'm just a newbie when it comes to these but uh, my understanding is that since the uh, since the litecoin uses script that uh, it's a totally different level uh, i think i actually need to go over to vercurex.com so let's go over to Vercurex and I think there's a chart there of that hashing power. Yeah, so if you go down on there, you can see there's the network uh, giga hash per second that they have there. And you can see the Bitcoins up at 82,000. And uh, the second one you've got running is in the name coin. And then you can see these others. Now the Litecoin is all the way down at 12.8. So I don't even understand this. Uh, it's it's a whole different animal. And I don't know if using the GPUs on the Litecoin, if that type of hash just doesn't work. And I don't know how these new jalapenos are going to work or the new Butterfly Labs are going to work for the Litecoin. Apparently the Litecoin network transactions and I know from my experience they're very very fast but I just really can't explain this incredibly low number uh, but uh, then again you can see there there's some hashing power coming in these other coins so I'm playing with the idea of uh, getting some jalapenos and running them on those uh, alt co coins to see uh, which ones 
perform the best. Uh, but then again, uh, we're still talking about, I believe we're talking about a shipping time of July. So we'll wait and see with the early uh, buyers when they get theirs what happens to the uh, hashing numbers. It's, it's going to be fascinating. Now, these G GPU mining rigs like mine, uh, I don't know if people are going to move them to the altcoins, sell them off to gamers. They're still fantastic uh, gaming cards. And, uh, you know, these are very, very powerful gaming cards. So they definitely have some value. But I just don't know what's going to happen to all those GPU miners. So let's take a look at the next question here. And that is from Tang. And the question is, two guys sitting directly in a review of gambling. Uh, bear with me here. I'm having some kind of lag here on the forum and maybe we're not going to get to that after all here it's just uh, there we go two guys sitting directly in a review of gambling magic recent record is very poor last four games lost three games okay so I don't know that's just spam so I hadn't uh, previewed all these. So, uh, But that uh, brings up the important question of the gambling. Uh, now I have the gambling site. Uh, I have the ad on my blog for uh, the Seals with Clubs site. And if you want to go there, you can click on uh, Seals with Clubs. And uh, I've been following them fairly closely as far as what kind of traffic they get as far as I know they're uh, the main one you can see 426 players uh, that's increased probably about fourfold from last December so clearly there's a lot more people going there it looks like they've added some second and third party authentication of course everybody's adding more authentication with all the hacks and all the break-ins so back to the Bitcoin chart it's very very exciting uh, we're looking at uh, this resistance and to me uh, that is a very very bullish chart uh, it's the same pattern that we saw it's the same pattern that you see in all markets when you have a continuous buying pressure uh, some people try to pick the top and sell off and then as soon as people see low prices they jump in and buy more so my guesstimate is that we're probably going to run and break this uh, 148 or so uh, high that we hit way back then before we got this massive run up and uh, I'm looking at about this level here of about 194 to 200 I think that's going to probably pose the next level of resistance. And uh, will we run straight there? I, I'm starting to get the feeling, especially after hearing Mark from Mt. Gox, with their 10 to 1 uh, millions of dollars coming in to that exchange and very, very little money going out. I'm thinking that uh, we're going to be taking that run at 200 within the next couple of days probably. And we'll talk to you next time.